In this pouch right here is my ultimate smart home kit and I'll show you the much needed hardware essentials to get you started with your DIY smart home. Hello and welcome to my channel which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem. And I've done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now, this is my first video in building the ultimate smart home kit. And as an avid DIYer, this is something I put together across time and use quite often. Now you will definitely need this kit in most of your smart home needs and it definitely will assist you in most of your smart home emergencies. And if you're just starting out, this will definitely get you started in building a DIY smart home. Now this video is a direct continuation to the eight awesome smart home apps that I had done. And do check it out as those apps will make your life a lot more easier in setting up a DIY smart home and I've left a link in the description. So this is my everyday tech pouch, which is from Peak Design. And as a technical project manager who works full-time remotely, this is what I have around with me when I work remotely, as well as bring along when I travel abroad to meet my smart home customers. Now, the logic in combining my everyday carry as well as my smart home kit is that it's accessible, it's organized, and it's compact. Let's go ahead and see what makes up my smart home kit. Essential number one, if you're using a Raspberry Pi or cameras that need storage, you definitely need a pair of micro SD cards as backup. Now, these are not just your ordinary micro SD cards. These are SD cards that are class 10, which enable uh, continuously read and write as well as they do not get spoiled over a period of time. So you always want to make sure you have a pair of class 10 micro SD cards. In my case, I have a backup of 32 GB. So I have a pair of these and these come in very handy when the storage in your camera or the storage in Raspberry Pi do corrupt at times and you want to reflash or reformat them. Now, if you want to reflash these micro SD cards, you definitely want to have this next essential, which is a micro SD card adapter very handy to reformat or reflash these SD cards. So you always want to have one of these with you. And when you purchase one of these, you also want to make sure you have a case that comes along with it because this makes it also very handy to store these items in this case. So you can see I have my micro SD card all stored right here. A very little handy kit. Now from here, just in case, if you don't have an SD card reader, you also want to get that one. So if your computer doesn't have it, please make sure you have an SD card reader. And together with the adapter and micro SD card, you definitely will be easy to reflash and reformat. Now in your smart home, you're definitely going to be using some kind of sensors, wireless buttons. And one of the most irritating problems is when you want to reset or repair these devices to your network because they're so fine, it's difficult to reach in. So in this one, we have a button which is quite hard to press. This one is quite difficult to reach as well as a door sensor. Even you have some hubs like Philips that also needs to be resetted with a pin. That's why the next essential is very important is a smartphone SIM tray pin. I have this with me, which makes it very easy to reach and also reset or repair these devices. And guess what? The same pin fits in in this SD card case. Now, depending on what devices you have connected to your home, I always keep a pair of USB cables in my smart home kit. There's three of them, very essential. You want to have a USB-A, USB-A. You also want to have a USB-A and micro B cable. And you also want to have a USB-A, USB-C cable. So these are the three cables I have with me. So it becomes easier to power up any smart device or even reflash a Argon one case, for example, using a USB-A, USB-A. So you wanna make sure you also have these cables with you. It's quite handy in getting work done for your smart home. Now, essential number five is also very important. Just before you go and change any electrical outlets, you always wanna make sure that there is no power. And that's where I have this screwdriver. where you can go and check the electricity. This may be old school, but this is what I use. And I also have a very fine screwdriver, which allows me to use it to 
screw and open up these inline adapters or uh, any devices that need a fine screw driver. Also, it's handy if you want to pry open any smart home devices. And this fine screw driver is also handy in pairing devices as well. So you can press it and it is also easier to get pairing done. So you want to make sure you have a pair of these handy when you want to change a device or you want to pry open anything. A couple of minutes back, we spoke about sensors, buttons, and most of these devices are powered by battery. So you always want to make sure you also have spares with you in your kit because those batteries drain over time and need to be replaced. If they're not replaced, some of your automations and whatever scenes you have set with your buttons may not work. So you always want to make sure you have spare batteries that are compatible with your sensors. Now, this next essential may sound silly, but I always recommend my smart home customers to always have a sticky pad and a marker. Very essential tool when you're going ahead and pairing devices and adding them to your home. Now, whenever you have a device installed, you want to make sure you have a sticky note that's applied to this device because there are three things you want to apply to this sticky note. You want to apply the device name. So this one will allow you to write to write what the name is. You want to make sure what network it is. Is it a Zigbee or is it a IP base? So you want to go and add in the IP address. So this is very essential when you're going and doing configuration. You can go and pick it up instead of going and consulting your router settings. And last but not the least, the assign room. So you want to make sure which room is assigned. So when you go, it's easier to refer and add it to your smart home. So Three pieces of information, very important on this sticky note. It's the device name, the network, is it Zigbee or our Wi-Fi, and lastly, the room. So you go ahead and stick this against the device that you just added to your home. So you want to make sure you have a sticky note and you also want to have a marker. Now, this essential right here is for advanced users where you can go and flash custom firmware like Tasmora onto your smart devices. And I have a FTDI card and a pair of jumper cables. Now, when you go out to buy jumper cables, you're going to get a larger bunch. You can always give it to your fellow DIYer who needs it. So always keep one, a couple of these in your uh, tech pouch because it makes it a lot more easier to reach and also flash custom firmware. Now let's go ahead and see how all of this fits into my smart home kit. And just like that, this is my smart home kit that I use quite often, take along with me wherever, whenever I visit my uh, customers. And this makes it a lot more easier to go and reach out for stuff that I need for my daily use and also to maintain my DIY smart home. And if you're looking for more Homebridge plugin tutorials, you want to check out the video right here. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.